dad's favorite food. Now, respected guests, tonight is no ordinary evening. We're going to be showing you something new, innovative, and really exciting in the Asian catering industry. Arta is setting out to play a pivotal role in the transformation of the UK restaurant industry and is ready to revolutionize the way restaurants and takeaways across the country are recognized by their peers. It isn't just a competition or just any old awards ceremony. Arta isn't about one special night or one specific accolade. It is, in fact, a revolutionary concept with the potential to actually revolutionize and modernize the culinary industry in unimaginable ways forever. Arta aims to be a key player in the technological revolution that will give restaurants and takeaway businesses of all sizes the opportunity to reach out and engage with customers in a way they haven't been able to do so before. So to explain more, I'm going to show you now a video which will tell you more about Arta, the Asian Restaurant and Takeaway Awards. Arta is Arta not just another, another award, award ceremony. ceremony. Arta is unique. Arta is ambitious. Arta is unparalleled. Arta, Asian Restaurant and Takeaway Awards. The inaugural Arta event is in recognition, celebration and elevation of the UK's South Asian culinary industry. A nationwide initiative to discover the Indian catering sector's unsung heroes. 2018 will see the dawning of Arta, the most prestigious celebration of South Asian cuisine in the UK since the creation of the first chicken tikka masala. Arta, Asian Restaurant and Takeaway Awards. Powered by Chef Online. The Arta Awards will recognize the British Asian catering industry's best restaurants and takeaways. Arta will honor the most talented and hardworking chefs and service staff and reward their unique creativity and skills. How does Arta work? 1. The customers spearhead our concept. Arta's journey begins and ends on a customer level. Hundreds of thousands of restaurant customers, in addition to Chef Online's initial clientele base, will nominate their favorite South Asian restaurant. Our extensive PR campaign will reach out to consumers via regional media and social media platforms to maximize our audience. Customers will also have the opportunity to win a brand new car as a grand prize for participating. At Arta, we democratise the nominations and voting to ensure the winner of the awards is determined by the UK's most ardent restaurant goers. 2. Nominations. The process of nomination via online applications and websites will help us compile a comprehensive list of prospective candidates. Expert judges will evaluate criteria such as customer reviews, health and safety ratings and a host of other factors while they carefully consider the participants. At Arta, we are not only working closely with the cuisines, but also our priority to the entire culinary experience. 360 degrees from the moment you step in the restaurant to the moment the door closes behind you. 3. Nationwide competitions. We will geographically separate the UK into 15 distinct regions. Drawing on rich customer feedback, we will then approach prominent local businesses to take part in our prestigious campaign. Following this, participants will undertake a series of programs and competitions in partnership with local colleges and universities. After the 15 regional cook-off events, the top 10 restaurants from each region will be chosen and invited to our grand finale event at the Aurora Ballroom at Intercontinental London, the O2. Four, the prizes. On the 30th of September 2018, we will award 15 regional prizes. The Newcomer of the Year Award, Chef of the Year Award and the Champion of Champions Award in honour of the outstanding Indian restaurant in the UK. An accolade recognised by a magnificent trophy worth £40,000 and made of silver and gold. 5. The Grand Finale 
the doors will open on the 30th of September 2018 onto a world of wonder. A kaleidoscope of culinary craftsmanship and electrifying entertainment, the likes of which have never been seen in our nation's capital. The Aurora Ballroom at Intercontinental London, the O2, will play host to the Asian Restaurant and Takeaway Awards for its inaugural celebration. Arta has a vision. We would be delighted to share it with you. Engage. Support. Sponsor. We want to work with you to revolutionise the UK curry industry forever. ArtaUK.com want to open my own restaurant so that I can uh, stand in for them. So I'd now like to welcome to the stage an extremely successful property entrepreneur now diversifying and extending his skills and expertise into the field of technology. He is the managing director of Salik and Co, CEO of Le Chef PLC, which is also known as Chef Online, and founder of Arta. Can I request now Mr. Mohammed Munim Salik for his welcome speech? Thank you, Samantha. Appreciate it. And it's lovely to see you, and thank you very much for coming and helping us with this event. I'm not sure what to say. Um, <laughs> most of you know me. You know, you know, I'm not one for speech. I can't talk. My knees are tr trembling, so that's where I am. Anyway, I'll do my best. It's not going to be a speech, but I'm just going to talk to you and just see how, how we're going from there. Right. Respected media heads, editors, journalists, distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Asalaamu As Alaikum. Thank you very much for coming today in the <coughs> press launch of Arta Asian Restaurant and Takeaway Awards. I'm very excited uh, with this journey. Um, I don't know where to begin, but hopefully it will be a challenging one and it will be a fruitful one. And that all depends on everyone here today. If everyone's helps and supports, then we can take everything to another level. Just to summarize um, how we're going to do this, um, obviously this is very ambitious, um, something, a challenge that we've taken on. Uh, maybe it hasn't been done before, um, and I'm not sure how we're going to cross that, cross that line. But I'm very hopeful with the support we've had from the journalist community, from the elders. Um, I, I can't complain, you know, I believe. We can go further, I believe we can make it. We will, through questions and answers a bit later on, find out a bit more about what are our plans, what we intend to do, what's our visions, what's our aims and objectives. Hopefully, um, if everyone helps with everyone's guidance, um, we, should be able to, we should be able to deliver what we are promising. Firstly, I'd like to thank everyone who has traveled from all over the country, especially we've got brothers from Northern Ireland, Scotland, we've got people from Wales, West Counties, from Southeast, East Anglia, from all over the country to help us, support us. And I thank everyone from the bottom of my heart and really appreciate everyone's support and being here tonight, especially when we have serious staff crisis, we have um, issues in restaurants and we left everything behind to be here tonight. Thank you all, much appreciated. I'd also like to thank Tim Hunter, who is the fundraising director for Oxfam. Um, with his ve very busy schedule of di diaries, he's managed to find a bit of time, and he's here to help and support us. Tim, thank you. I'd also like to thank one of my boyhood heroes. Although I'm not a great cricketing man, but when I grew up, it's a name that I remember. And I'm sure most of you would know he would not need any introduction. I'd just like to say... Devon Malcolm, Devon, thank you very much for coming. And it was done at such a short notice. It's unbelievable. You know, he said, look, I believe in what you're doing. I want to help. And he's, he's made the effort. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Finally, um, I'm just talking, but it's not about me. It's a whole team. And without a team, I don't think we can go far. 
alone we can run. But unless you have a team, you cannot deliver. And we have a number of people who have been helping us from a white piece of paper. There was nothing on it when we started. And we've, we've literally come all the way here today. And everyone who's here to support us is the testimony. And everyone's belief that you know, we, we do have something that we can share and we can give back. I'd like to thank Zakir Bhai, he's hiding somewhere. Um, if I can see him, Zakir Bhai. Yeah, please, um, don't hide at the back. Do come in the front, we'll be needing you soon. We've got Shazid Bhai somewhere here. Um, I haven't seen him actually, but uh, he should be here somewhere. Um, oh, he's at the back, he's helping. And um, we've got other steering committee members. For, uh, we've got Rimon Bhai, who's, who's been doing a lot of hard work on the background, doing all the brochures, the technology side, doing the websites. So Rimon Bhai, working day and night. Thank you very much, wherever you are hiding. Where are you? I can't see you. Look, he's right at the back, you know, he's hiding. Like he likes to work at night time, so that's why he's right at the back, you know. He can see what everyone's doing. Um, other few other names you mentioned, we've got Shahid Bhai, who's traveling from Colchester. Where are you, Shahid Bhai? Somewhere here? Here you go, he's at the back as well. He's, he's been coming from Colchester a number of nights to help us get things done. Then we've got Moinul Bhai helping. Aziz Bhai, who is missing today, he's got a, another event due to that he couldn't come in. Um, Kodrul, he's somewhere here hiding. Um, it was God's rules really push in the end. You know, it's easy to say than done. It's, it's easy, we can, we can come up with a lot of plans, but you need someone to push that boundary to say, look, let's do it, we can do it. And God's rule really made that happen. So a big thank you to God's rule for taking the initiative. Um, and by the way, he's also my brother-in-law, just in case anyone didn't know. And, and I must say one thing, this has really brought us together. Before, I mean, we used to say the formalities, hi, hello, Big brother, that's it. But this time around, we really now communicate and we talk and we, we really, you know, it's, it's one of those things that it's also brought us together in a way. And I'm sure there are a lot of people from Chef Online to this. Um, we've, we've got to know people, we've got to meet people and we become friends and become well-wishers. And these are good things and this is why this room is full today. Um, I don't know what else to say. I'm not, by the way, I'm not reading off this, I'm totally lost. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Um, and finally, a, a big thank you to the journalist brothers, editors, who have always helped us, supported us. Um, when we did Chef Online, if it wasn't for their help and support, uh, we wouldn't have reached the, got the message across. And they've always been there. And today, uh, I believe many of the brothers has come in as well, and sisters, and I really appreciate everyone helping support. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to mention all the names. Um, please do forgive me. And I don't want to take too much time because we do want to carry on with the evening. So everyone, once again, heartfelt thanks. Thank you very much. Salaam alaikum. Thank you very much, Mr. Salik. Um, don't worry, there's lots more thank yous to come. But let's move on and actually hear from some of the team who've been involved in this exciting new initiative. I'd like to welcome a few of them to the stage to take some questions. Mr. Zakir Khan, Associate Director for Canary Wharf Group. Mr. Razak Amin Shaheed, a successful entrepreneur and restaurateur. Mr. Kodral Islam. Please make your way up to the stage. Successful restaurateur and entrepreneur also. And also uh, Mr. Sleekback. Um, for all the press here, you will have an opportunity to ask your own questions a little later if they haven't been answered in the next hour or so. Hopefully they will have been, but I'm going to take this opportunity to ask some questions myself to our panelists who've been so involved in this from the word go. Um, first of all, gentlemen, there are lots of awards ceremonies for the curry industry. Why another one? What makes this so special, so different? <coughs> Shall I start? As usual. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, great question, Samantha. I don't know. <laughs> um, why another one? I suppose, you know, you've seen the video the presentation where it says quite clearly that this is about a new innovation. This is about engaging the customers, the users, the people who actually go to a restaurant on a regular basis. It's about engaging them. It's about interactive. Um, I know there are, there are many awards, um, very successful ones as well, in our community, especially in the restaurant world. But this one, the reason I am actually involved and 
partially because this man twisted my arm and partially because I actually felt that this um, concept was, was quite different, uh, was like it's a very engaging, it was uh, about um, the restaurant and the consumers coming together. Uh, it was about people who eat Indian curries for them to decide who is the best restaurant, not, not judging panel. People who actually go to restaurants and decide if they vote for your local restaurant, that means they're satisfied with what they're having in your restaurant. So I think when Salik Bhai told me this is the concept, this is what we want to achieve. I said to Salik Bhai, as you know very well, I have no background in catering. Absolutely none, apart from eating. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't hide that, can I? But anyway, um, so I said to Salik Bhai, look, I'll, I'll get involved, I'll support you as much as I can. But do not expect anything from me in terms of expertise, in terms of you know, the rest and trade. That I don't have. What I can give you is hopefully you know, uh, moral support. I can give you support in terms of organizing events like this. I can give you support in terms of speaking to colleagues, peers, uh, to encourage them to come along to events like this. And if that is helpful for you, then I'm with you. And uh, Salik Bhai very humbly accepted my, uh, my offer. So thank you very much, Salik Bhai. So, I, so like I said, I think this is a great event and we like to call it the champions of champion. The champions of champion and if you want to compare this to you know, football or any sports, this is like the World Cup where <laughs> we're going to have a World Cup which is worth £40,000 £40, worth of a trophy that will be taken by the winner. Not for good. <laughs> <laughs> Good clarification. For one year. <laughs> and I, I think this is a great, great concept. And I think um, well done to Salik Bhai for coming out with this idea. And um, let's all support it. Let's all come behind it and make it a great success. Thank you. So you mentioned the £40,000 trophy, which will not be staying with the winner. We have heard the clarification. So they can't go melt it down or anything. Um, <laughs> How are you managing the budget for this? What is the budget? It's going to be a big event this time next year. How are you paying for it? How are you managing it? Uh, thank you, Samantha. I'll take uh, this question. Uh, my name is Kodrul Islam. I am one of the steering committee and the activity committee member. As I am one of the activity committee member, I know we have a large enough budget to manage our campaign. Our tangible efforts include the largest ballroom in Europe where we'll be holding the uh, event forecasted over four months of nominations. Our four months extensive regional campaigning would encourage thousands and hundreds of customers to getting uh, involved in this event. We are the only establishment of this only award to offer a trophy worth £40,000 as you've seen in the video. We have allocated mothers to take care of the catering for this event. With the executive committee, we, the executive committee, believe in ATA and the mission, and we believe ATA will be a great success. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned that this is going to be led by the customer. They're the ones who are going to get to decide, not a judging panel. How are you managing the marketing of this? How are you going to get people involved all, all around the country? <coughs> Shall I take this uh, question? Yes, on this please. One? Uh, first of all, uh, good evening and assalamu alaikum uh, to everybody who's here and thank you Samantha. Right, I would be in charge of all the marketing and I'll be working very closely uh, with the 15 regions and the local press and uh, the local newspapers, uh, local stations and we've got a huge uh, budget and we'll be uh, taking some... Uh, pro um, uh, so, uh, f through Facebook paid Facebook, paid uh, Twitter, Instagram, digital mail shots, exposing in local regional restaurants through flyers and leaflets. Plus, uh, regional media partners will ensure they promote ARTA event and all participants by editorial write-ups and paid uh, adverts. We will promote advertising uh, through uh, spread, through quarter pages and more. Uh, profiles for every restaurants and takeaways who will be given the opportunity to be shortlisted for cook-off and promote the top 10 regional winners. We will also offer a brand new car to encourage customers' engagement, customers who nominate their favorite restaurant and takeaways. On top of all this, 
Our strategic partner, Chef Online, has over 100,000 of their active client base who will uh, be encouraged to nominate. And finally, we will also offer special promotional campaign packages to help all willing participants to maximize their potential. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. So tell us what else is unique about ARTA and more about the grand final evening in just under a year's time, gentlemen. I'll take that. Salam alaikum again to everyone. Right, I'm just going to quickly touch base on your first question as well, a little bit, if that's okay. Um, as Zakir Ray said, uh, consumers are the peers, and they are the one who will decide who they want to nominate. They are the one who goes to a restaurant, they eat, and they know which is their favorite eateries. And if they say, I like XYZ restaurant, who is there to argue? We all have different tastes, but we might not agree, but we have to respect the people that matters. And this is what we will be aiming at. We will be using technology, which will make it easy and free for anyone and everyone from all over the country to nominate their favorite restaurants. And this will also ensure transparency, something that we are adamant to ensure we maintain. So this is one thing we will definitely work very hard to maintain that. We would also have a nationwide campaign during the nomination period, and that's going to include um, partnership with regional medias, that will include partnership with colleges, paid Facebook campaign, um, other social media, including digital marketing, etc. And we will try to really um, create a mushroom effect within the country for everyone to participate and nominate their favorite restaurant. And what it will do is it will also engage the restaurant and the um, customers, and we would somehow it will also help bring that uh, bond together. It's sometimes what we don't do is we don't really go and ask people for like reviews, etc. And sometimes reviews and things nowadays really matters. Um, then there are other aspects of social media marketing that a lot of us are lacking behind. And we'd also encourage people to do that as well as part of the, part of the process. Um, on top of that, we'll be offering a brand new car and hopefully that will encourage the customers to engage um, taking part in this nomination. At the same time, we'll also encourage restaurant owners to communicate with their clients by offering various offers and promotions so that they're also doing a bit of marketing for themselves. So these are the things that we are going to do. Well as that, the other important aspect that we, we haven't touched base on is we will be working with 15 regional colleges and we'll be having our cook-offs in the colleges. By having cook-offs, we intend to bridge the gap a bit more from what we have. And I believe and I know there are a lot of us working with colleges, but what we're trying to do is get the whole country as a whole, get colleges, cooking colleges, universities all over the country to participate. By doing this, we can encourage the youths of today to consider Indian restaurant as a career path. At the same time, we'll also, hopefully, we can get the colleges to help us, to help ourselves by doing a lot of short courses like CPDs, we call it in the professional industry. We can send our management team or staff to get a bit more uh, management training, etc. And this will also help us bridge the gap. If we can comply with a lot of rules and regulation, health and safety, then we can encourage the use of today and make it a bit more exciting and, and try to encourage them to come and join our industry. And that should hopefully also fill some desperately needed staff shortage. And I fully understand we'll never get the skilled chefs. However, there's room for some help we, we might be able to achieve. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. As I said, there will be an opportunity for more questions later, but for now, thank you, gentlemen. Um, if you just remain seated for just one moment. Well, I, I actually, no, it's probably better if you leave, then we're not interrupting. Yeah, it's, then we're not interrupting our other speakers. Um, just while they make their way off the stage. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Well, as you know, you're all here because is the, this is the first formal event to launch the ARTA 
Although it has already established, thanks to the hard work of the committee, a number of respected and renowned leaders within the industry who are taking part, and we can now hear from some of them about why and their thoughts about the award. So let me introduce a gentleman that goes back a long way with Mr. Salik. They first worked together many years ago, but since then have become very good friends despite taking very different paths in their business lives. May I please call Mr. Hafiz Alon Baksh, CEO of ANT Bangla UK, to say a few words. Assalamualaikum, good evening. <coughs> Sorry, I didn't know that I had to say anything. <coughs> Actually, firstly, I'd like to congratulate the team, the Archer team. And it's, tonight is night for us to, from the press to see what's, what's there to launch. But anyway, thank you for asking me to say a few words. Mr. Munim and I, we've been actually a long way since late 80s. We work together. The man I admire, he's a very sincere, <coughs> hardworking, and man with a vision. And a few months ago when he said, oh, look, last couple of years when he wanted to launch Chef Online, I've been, as a good friend, been negative about it, but he was determined to go and to launch that. And we thought about it, but I can see the success now. Now, talking about the Archer and the team that he's got, I'm very proud of it, and I know he's going to do an excellent job. And I, from the media, as a friend, and I know everyone here who knows Mr. Munim Salik, who will help him to achieve his goals. And, and the team will do the level best to achieve achieve the best of the industry's need. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, we can now hear from Howard Dorber, the MD of Canary Wharf Group, who is also supporting these new awards. Uh, thank you very much. Um, you, you said before you'd been a journalist for 20 years. You must have started when you were five years old. <laughs> it's... Um, very difficult to believe. Um, I'll, I'll tell you how important this evening is to me, um, because you may know that my team, Manchester City, are playing at home tonight, and I'm going to miss the first 20 minutes, so I'll probably miss the first six or seven goals. <coughs> um, Canary Wharf is very proud to be supporting um, Arta this evening. Um, as, as you know, we have a, a long tradition of supporting our local business community uh, here in the East End. Um, is there anyone from uh, Camden here? No. Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big uh, Indian and, and uh, Bangladeshi restaurant community in Drummond Street just next to Euston Station. Uh, we're looking at potentially, we're bidding to buy Euston Station at the moment. And so uh, we're looking to work with the community there uh, very closely as well. And we've, we've taken that responsibility to support local businesses uh, uh, very much to heart. Um, you've already heard from Zakir Khan, my, my colleague. Uh, I'm Zakir's boss, which is a difficult job at the best of times. Um, but Zakir has uh, really introduced me uh, years ago to the British Bangladeshi community. And amongst other things, and I'm not going to make a political point, but uh, amongst other things, I've, uh, I've become the uh, chair of Labour Party Friends of Bangladesh. Um, and I want to say something here, not, not party political, but on behalf of all the politicians. Because I know we've got friends here who are Conservatives, who are Lib Dem, who are independent. We've got independent uh, colleagues here. But all of the people in politics who support the British Bangladeshi community. Because um, now is the time for all, all of us to come together and support and celebrate this industry. Uh, I don't know if you know how many post offices there are in the UK. Or how many boots stores or how many Tesco stores. But if you put the number of Tesco stores and boot stores and post offices together, you still don't get as many as there are Indian and Bangladeshi and Pakistani-owned restaurants in this country. It is, it is a massive industry. It's a five billion pound industry in itself. But if you look at the supply chain and the economic impact of that industry, it is huge. And um, I was saying the other night, we had uh, a delegation from BCA at Canary Wharf, and I said, um, during the recession, as I was travelling around the country and going to places like Grimsby, like Aberdeen, like Penzance, you get these little rows of shops, and it's the 
Indian curry house or the Bangladeshi curry house, the Pakistani restaurant or the takeaway in that row of shops which is keeping that high street alive. And through the last 10 years, it's been very difficult out there, but you guys have kept those high streets alive. And that's something that I think senior politicians in this country need to be reminded of and need to understand because this industry is the backbone of Britain, the backbone of Britain's high streets. And we... We, your friends in politics, will never forget that, and we will all work to make sure that government and senior politicians recognise the huge contribution you make and sometimes the, the help that you need from, from government policy. So um, I strongly support this initiative. It's a wonderful opportunity to celebrate the, the very best in South Asian cuisine. Uh, it's very ambitious. So we at Canary Wharf will support it, and we wish you all the best. Thank you. Howard, thank you for your kind words, your support, and for willingly foregoing Manchester City. Hope you get back and see some goals. Um, I'd now like to welcome to the front to say a few words, Mr. Nahas Pasha, who is the president of the London Bangla Press Club. Assalamualaikum. A lot of you know me as I'm in the same trade as Salik Bai, I'm in awards. Uh, <laughs> well, when I came in, someone said, why? Why is there another award, you know? There are, it seems to be Bengali community, when they go one way, they go, you know, everyone follow this. There are so many awards, but I say, as a journalist, I go to a lot of awards and uh, a lot of different events in different community. One thing, uh, this awards events has put us on the map because, because of the competition, because of the so many awards, uh, we have raised the bar. It's not happening in a community hall. It's not ha happening in a smaller scale, big awards, you know, massive budget. Uh, and I congratulate Salik Bai uh, to take this challenge. And so it, it, it really brings the profile of the whole industry. But on the other hand, we have to see some things. I was in a town near Gatwick a few weeks ago and speaking to a restaurator, went to a restaurant, and basically that restaurant, she, he burst into tears and say, isn't there anybody to talk for us? Isn't there anybody to help us? He says that every night in the South, one or another restaurant's been great, every weekend, and say no one is talking about us. There are restaurants there are not many illegal immigrants in this country now. I mean, people who work in restaurants. All the restaurants knows that 20,000 fine, they can't, be, they can't bear, they shut. And this restaurant was saying, they come in a Friday night or a Saturday night, all stand still, no one can move, eight o'clock in the evening, and they just, they just don't want to listen to it and it's hampering their businesses. And end of the raid, they don't find anybody, they just go. And this man was really, really crying. No, nobody, no politician talks about this. And I don't know whether this government is ever listening to you know, this. There are people who sitting here, a lot of us who does support conservative party or other parties. <coughs> You know, I don't know what they're doing, you know. If they should send strong message to this government, this five billion pound industry, you know, uh, is happening. Other day, someone from Brick Lane was saying eight o'clock in the evening, Friday evening, they just stopped the whole road and they've been raining one, uh, raiding one restaurant after another restaurant. And there wasn't many illegal immigrants in Brickland because everybody nowadays knows the penalty. Anyway, I'm, 
I just had to tell this because that sort of event will raise the profile of the industry and I hope every awards, every event we do, if we get anybody from the government, just grill them and tell them that that shouldn't go on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Now, as I said a, l a little earlier, there's going to be lots of thank yous this evening. So let me start with some of them. Some of the people here tonight who've already shown their support for this exciting new initiative. And I'd like to give my personal thanks to them uh, on behalf of all of the committee. Mr. Abdur Rob, a businessman and entrepreneur who's been running a number of successful businesses. He's also a chef online business development manager and has traveled all the way from Northern Ireland to help and support us. Please give him a clap. Yusuf Chowdhury, who's been running his successful restaurant business. He's Chef Online Business Development Manager for Northwest Region. Today, he's traveled from Liverpool to help and support us. <laughs> Tommy Mir, MBE, who had his International Chef of the Year event last week, where His Royal Highness Princess Royal, or Her Royal Highness rather, Princess Royal, was the guest of honor. It was a very successful event. May we congratulate him on his success. I'd also like to thank Oli Khan coming from Newcastle, Saeed Latif from Newcastle, Motim Raham from Newcastle, and Saeed Dalal from Sunderland. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to introduce our guest speaker, one of our guest speakers, a man who shouldn't need any introduction, especially as we heard a little earlier that he is a, a personal hero to our uh, Mr. Salik, who's obviously organized tonight's event. Uh, Devon Malcolm, who is an ambassador for the Chance to Shine charity. Now, he is on a national charity. His national charity, rather, is on a mission to spread the power of cricket throughout schools and communities. You will, of course, know, I'm sure, lots of cricket fans in the room tonight that he was one of England's few genuinely fast bowlers of the 1990s, born in Kingston, in Jamaica. He settled in England and qualified to play, thankfully for us, for England in 1987. But here, before we hear from Devon, let's just play you a little video about the work that his charity does. The Villiers' first ball to Malcolm sealed their fate. Well, Devon gave Fanny de Villiers uh, a, couple when, uh, a couple when he batted. I walked into bat and I could hear all the guys. You know, all the guys said, come on, here. Yeah. But it was a good bounce. I just stood there, and by the time I'm over here, clunk straight between the eyes. <laughs> it was fine. Look, I think I had a good helmet on, mind you. But I was pretty upset. I was pretty upset. I mean, I got on well with, you know, Alan Donald and stuff like that. And walking off, he went up to me and asked me for more rights. And believe me, I just looked at him like that. I just saw right through him. I said, look, don't ask me that. <laughs> You're dead, you know? And that, that was the general feeling, you know? I mean... Yeah, I was I was a bit cheesed off, yeah. But I mean, that as I said was just last resort, you know, a bit of extra fuel in the fire because, you know, we had to. Mr. Barlow, Gary Kirsten taking strike, no runs on the border yet. Ferocious for the first delivery. Inside out in those three deliveries. And convincing. Got him. Well. Bold him. Pitched it up. Got his reward. Breakthrough. Vessels goes for 28, 73 for 4. Caught him, caught him. Graham Thorpe, the end of Macmillan. You have to say, affected by that brute. Oh God, he's up. 
of six. What a day. What a day for Devon Malcolm. it again a great catch by Steve Rhodes wonderful piece of cricket there and another one and another one eight for Devon Malcolm another catch for Rhodes to get rid of Rhodes Balloon for South Africa Bowed in nine wickets for Malcolm last Englishman to get nine in England was Jim Laker. What a performance, bowled up his pattern. An exciting performance as well. Brought life to the crowd and everybody that supports England. And put England on the brink of winning this test match. Yes, smiled Evan. Terrific figures, nine for 57. Totally deserved. Only Jim Laker for England has had better figures this century. Happy memories, I'm sure, for many of you, but not least, Devon himself. Please welcome him to the stage. Thank you very much, Samantha. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, nice to be here. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a great, great, great occasion. Salik, thank you very much as well to give me the opportunity uh, to be here tonight to be supporting your fantastic initiative and also at the same time um, supporting one of my uh, uh, favorite charities. Over the years I've supported a hell of a lot of charities, but this one is pretty close to my heart. Sally, I noticed uh, a while ago you were just a little bit apprehensive, not certain uh, where this initiative is going to go. I tell you something now, Chance to Shine, I was one of the, uh, um, the initial person with Mark uh, um, Nicholas earlier on who, who um, got Chance to Shine interview in 2005 during the Ashes series. And this came about, um, you know, I play the Ashes, I play cricket a lot, but never ever won the Ashes. And, you know, it was that in 2005, even I've got girls, my daughters, whatever, they were even missing parties to watch cricket. And that don't normally happens, you know. And um, initiative came up, okay, you know, um, kids are loving this game, let's, um, you know, try and improve or help state school to get competitive cricket back on, on the state. You know, a lot of the state schools, um, they're playing grounds, playing fields and all that business have been um, taken over. And it was only a pipe dream in 2000, uh, 2005. And presently, it was just a, a, a five-year program we had in plan. And since 2005, over a decade that's been going, and I'm pleased to say, um, chance to shine now. I've got over three million boys and girls playing competitive cricket in state schools, and I'm very happy for the opportunity to be one of the uh, uh, sponsors, uh, um, one of the one of the charities, sorry, that's been chosen by Arta um, to be supporting uh, uh, during this year. And as I said, it's a, it's a great initiative, uh, similar to um, Chance to Shine Vision earlier on. I noticed I had a a bit of spiel what this was all about yesterday and you know trying to help the industry try to help um, uh, um, young caterers and all that business get into industry and as Howard said a while ago this is a you know a major part of the British economy no doubt about it five billion pounds you know and what I say also cricket equal curry curry equal cricket and um, you know I, I must also say a majority of the students um, you know, uh, um, in the Chance to Shine program, I'm from South Asia background as well. Quite a large proportion is on, you know, um, Chance to Shine involve all over the country. So I reckon it's a great vehicle, I do feel, for both um, Arta and Chance to Shine to keep this great sport of ours. I said cricket is the greatest sport. You know, it's a game of life, really. So, and, you know, you know I, I do quite a lot of hosting at the moment and still play some Masters cricket. And I tell you this, um, when you're playing a game of uh, charity game cricket and there's curry on the menu, I promise you the marquees are absolutely jump pack. <laughs> I tell you, for example, we normally play a charity game in, in uh, Brentwood and it's the largest lunch ever. And how, uh, you know, you, you, you turn up the functions and, you know, you're talking about service. But I tell you, 
Brentwood Cricket Club, Curry for lunch, half of a thousand people, and you never have such an efficient service. Unbelievable. People just get served all at once, and as I said, you know, it's a great industry, and glad to know you guys constantly working and trying to improve the industry. Um, what I do say, thank you very much um, for the opportunity to represent uh, um, my charity, uh, um, Chance to Shine, and as I said, it's a great project, um, Chance to Shine, and also Arthur is a great project also. So I'm looking forward to working with Salem, and also, um, Zach, thank you very much for the opportunity for recommending my, uh, um, my favorite charities to be involved with this. And I'm looking forward to helping you guys and do as much as I can during the year. And not only the first year, because I do feel, like Chance to Shine, you're going to go from strength to strength and continue over the year. So I wish you all the success. And hopefully, you know, I'll be there with you guys to help you all along the way as much as I can do. Thank you very much. Devon, thank you. Well, we certainly know the way to your heart, don't we? <laughs> thank you for your kind words and your support and for being here tonight to explain more about the charity and the work that you do. And we're now going to hear from a few more speakers. Could I ask you all kindly to just keep your comments as brief as possible because we still have an awful lot to get through. So please can I invite up here uh, Mr. Pasha Kondakar, ex-president for British Bangladeshi Caterers Association, who has been campaigning tirelessly for the betterment and well-being of the BCA and Bangladeshi catering industry for many, many years. Thank you, Samantha. Bismillah rahman rahim Good evening to you, and Assalamu alaikum. It's another award. As Nahazba says, at the starting of says, another award. But I can see one thing saying this, unique. Atta is mainly backed by Chef Online. And I was the BCA president and the Secretary General for more than a decade. And I've been working as a waiter nearly 40 years, as a restaurant owner for nearly 36 years. I've seen many promise and many deliveries in my life. A word there is a saying say that a community or nation, if you cannot recognize your champion, you cannot produce any champion. For the sake of producing champion, you need to recognize them. And I hope the ATA is doing very well. Their initiative is very novel, and they will be successful. I congratulate them from the bottom of my heart. As I can see, the chef online doing a great job for this industry. I'm clearly uh, can say that, that many online companies in the market, like Just Eat, like many other online companies, making huge profit, exploiting our industry. But I can see the chef online is doing his social corporate job as well. Thank you, Mr. Salek, for your great jobs. Santa, one minute. Sorry. Sorry. I haven't said anything yet about my industry. Why I want to say, because this industry is dying. If you wanted to do this sort of a vote, you have to keep alive this industry. Within five years' time, I can assure you, I am doing this BCA award for the last more than 12 years. I have done the BCA award. And BCA is working from 1960. The curry has started its journey in the early 50s. And I'm afraid we do not recognize this curry as Indian curry anymore. It is a British curry. We have given a name as the British curry industry. And it's become a British part of the British life, British heritage. Howard was saying that about this industry celebration. I'll say no, this is not the time for celebration. This is the time to save this industry. Through everything, we have to save this industry. The award ceremony and everything we go, we have to tell the politician, please do remember your promise. We understand your memory is very short, but please do remember about this industry. This industry is dying, and we do not see 
we don't want to see that our livelihood will be finished very shortly. I had a sixth restaurant. I had got two left, and I'm sure by next year, I will not be one of the owner. If I can't sell it, I will close it. The way they are exploiting us, and millions of curry lovers in this country. Finally, one thing, Mr. Malcolm, Samantha, we remember, we can see, when the Gurkha people wanted to have their right, nobody came forward. But there was a celebrity. She came forward, Joanna, and she saved the Gurkha's life. In this country, they are right. We wanted to see you celebrity people come forward and save our industry. Because you can do a lot about our industry, not the politician. We've been loving politicians for more than decades. So we want something from you. And finally, Saligbai, your team, Chef Online, and Arta, we congratulate you. We wish you all the best. And I extend our help to you anytime you need. Thank you. Thank you. A heartfelt message there. Thank you. I'd now like to welcome Mr. A4 Ali, President of the British Bangladeshi Caterers Association. Thank you, Samantha. What can I say? I usually don't sit with a good speaker. I was sitting next to Pashabai, and he has taken all my words out of my heart. It's all right. It can be forgiven, it's no problem. Well, we are both in the same line. Uh, distinguished guests, um, community leaders, especially caterers, print media, and all the non caterers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Malcolm, Mr. Malcolm, sorry, Devon, you don't look young. You, do, you are not eating Indian food uh, regularly, I think. Indian food makes you younger. I like challenging people. Earlier on this evening, when I first met Devon, I said, Devon, would you like to play with me? I would like to bowl, and you will be the Batman. He rejected. He knows that I can beat him. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Samantha owe me 10 pounds. You took two pictures with me. <laughs> Could I have your email address so I can uh, send a, uh, a bill to you later on? Gentlemen, you are being so wonderful listener tonight. Nobody is gossiping. This is what I have noticed. Usually we talk a lot. And that's because all the speaker is being so constructive and delivering what is need to be done for today's, for our industry. I do not look older than Pashabai because I have dyed my hair earlier this evening before I came here. He has served 40 years in this industry and has got experience into the industry. We both in the same boat, but failed to deliver what the caterers are expecting from us. I totally agree with all the speaker that this curry industry is, will not exist if we do not take any initiative within a very short period of time to convince whoever government is ruling us, it doesn't matter whether it's conservative or labor. We need somebody to lead us. Pasha, I have asked two great celebrity people to lead us. We should be behind them. Let us promise tonight that we will, we will support them. They cannot go along to... To, to, to support us if we do not back them. Pashavai, the, uh, the other Pashavai, the journalist uh, gentleman who mentioned that he was visiting West Sussex, he must have visited Crowley by somehow, if I may write. And I know the owner, you mentioned that he was crying. I would like to cry tonight. I usually have a 10 staff in my restaurant and we only have five, two in the kitchen and three at the front. Why? Why these things happening to us? Why there is a cap that we cannot bring anybody up, uh, from abroad? 
this industry survive on cheap labor. And we need to persuade the government to recognize our problem so that we can bring or hire a cheap labor from a cheap country. Country may be cheap, but the cheap labor I'm looking for. Sorry, it's a wrong word I've used. We need to make a big issues out of that. The only way, I'm a very small man, cannot take a big initiative to, to do, but what we can do is let us be in one platform, under one umbrella. Let us have one voice, doesn't matter what organization we are belongs to. Let us have one voice and ask the government to recognize our problem. Anyway, the reason here today, this is my part of the things I thought I would share with everyone of you. I would like to congratulate Arta for doing such a wonderful initiative to recognize takeaways, the restaurant, uh, everything. But please, could I ask uh, all of you who are taking the initiative to give an award to everyone, make sure that you recognize the chef, not the owner of the restaurant. If we need to survive in this industry, we have to keep our chefs alive. When I said life, make them happy. How do we make them happy? Let us recognize them. I have seen Pashavai, uh, journalist Pashavai is the person who always recognizes the chef, which is very nice of you. But when it comes to take the um, initial award, you will see mother and father, local MP, and the councillor is with the person receiving the award. But please make sure that you recognize the chef, and he comes and he is part of this event, so that it will encourage other uh, chefs to be a part of our industry. That is only request I would make to the Arta uh, organization to recognize the chef. May I wholeheartedly thank you for taking such a wonderful initiative to recognize our chefs, children, and uh, forthcoming in the industry, all the children. I wish you all the best, and thank you very much for inviting BBCA, and wish you all the best for the future. Allah Hafiz. A for Ali, thank you very much, and I promise I'll give you that ten pounds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. We've <laughs> we've only. What does it mean? Asian restaurant takeaway awards. Okay. Okay. Good point. Good point. Uh, okay. Well, hopefully a few of our uh, hopefully a few of our next speakers will. Okay, it's a good point, thank you. Um, as I did mention before, we are broadcasting live via Facebook on LB24, and please could our next speakers keep their comments short because we are running out of time and we still have some more to get through. Um, so now I'd like to welcome a well-known figure in the Bangladeshi community, a highly successful entrepreneur and politician. Can I request Mr. Mukim Ahmed, former chair of the British Bangladeshi <laughs> Chamber of Commerce. Very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to celebrate the in inaugural ceremony of ARTA, the Asian Restaurant and Takeaway, right? Right. Uh, I am delighted to be here, and I want to congratulate Brother Shal Salik for his uh, excellent work. He has been a very successful man. Uh, if you go on and look at what he has done before with the uh, Chef Online, you'll see that he had a complete service is provided a complete service starting from the uh, uh, takeaway to the registering and uh, uh, epos all he provided for that service for the restaurant trade uh, the important thing which we are uh, hearing today are the problems like nas pasha and kondukar pasha has been saying that there have been lots of restaurant closing up ladies and gentlemen i had 12 restaurants a chain called cafe nas and I, I, I did run it for about 12, uh, 14 years. And at the end, I came to the conclusion that I couldn't go on for the problems which were beyond me. And some of these problems has been highlighted by Nahaz here. You get uh, immigration raid 
you know, are you, uh, of course we have got shortage of staff in the restaurants and we are sometimes, uh, without knowing, you employ people and the government has made it uh, compulsory that you, sh you have to know the background of the uh, 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 person you are employing. So sometimes because the restaurants are so busy, they cannot venture into the possibility of finding out who they are employing because they are themselves are so busy. So that is one of the problems. And there are other problems as well. I have been done for uh, HESAP. Uh, HESAP is something which uh, comes from the European Union. Uh, the law, their law is uh, imposed on us. And when something goes wrong in the kitchen uh, or in the front of the house, uh, you, you, if, if the owners get uh, dragged into it. It's the chef, sorry. Uh, do you want me to be short and quick? Uh, yeah. But let me just go on and say quickly that God help those who help themselves, right? If you gentlemen just talk about getting help from outside, you are not going to get it. You have to up your act. What you have to do, you have to uh, improve your quality of service and quality of your food. And if you improve the quality of service and food, you can charge people more money. And if you can charge people more money, you'll have the ability to, uh, ab ability to employ good people and good chefs. I won't say anything more. So it's you who needs to do the job. Thank you very much. And Appreciate Salik Bhai, whatever you are doing. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd now like to welcome Mr. Kamal Yaqib, President from the Bangladeshi Caterers Association. Thank you. Good evening and assalamu alaikum. I want to congratulate Salik Bhai and his associates for what they are going to do next year in September. I think it's going to be a spectacular event. It looks like that. Salik Bhai, we will be with you all the way, but remember, you are one of our sponsors. You have been for a while. Uh, do not stop sponsoring us, please. <laughs> so that's one request. Uh, they have all spoken about the problems we have. We at BCA are going to hold our 12th award and dinner event next month. For all the last 12 years, we have been awarding both restaurant owners and chefs and also community leaders. So, brother, we don't forget uh, takeaway owners either. We have, we have awarded takeaway owners as well. So remember that. Uh, we are with you. Now, I won't take t time. I, I, I think there must be many more speakers. But the problem we have, everyone knows. I think uh, Salik Bhai and his team are also going to highlight, I've seen in their brochure, about the staff shortage we are having. And I'm sure we can work together on this. We have teamed up with FSB, the Federation of Small Businesses. They have about 170,000 members. And I think work to, we can work together. They've got a big lobbying arm. I think we can work together towards that. So we'll keep on trying. And we need to bring in. I mean, we, uh, the number of staff, skilled staff that we want to bring in from Southeast Asia is, is not much. It's not many. I mean, it w it's not going to affect the net migration, I'm sure. What we need is, need is about two staff per restaurant. So about 24, 25,000 people, that's it. This is not going to affect net uh, migration. So we'll, if anyone is listening and if politicians are listening, uh, our BCA is a non-political platform. So we ask you to help us in this. This industry that we all work for is a big industry and it isn't g getting enough recognition. I can tell you, I'm sure you'll all agree. I won't say much more. Congratulations again, Salik Bhai and your team. And I'm sure you, you are going to make uh, uh, deliver a fantastic event next year. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Right, a few more thank yous to um, personally mention some people who've traveled a long way to be here tonight and have been supporting the setting up of these awards. Pavel Chowdhury from the Bengal Clipper Group, Asko Ali, President and Secretary of the Sussex Bangladeshi Caterers Association, Tutul Ahmed, Raipur Restaurant in Eastbourne, Abdul Qadir, the Spice Garden in Eastbourne, Lou Dumia from the Modubon Group from Lees, Hampshire, and Shiraj Ali from Canvey Island. Thank you to all of you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I'd now like to welcome Tim Hunter, who's the Director of Fundraising at Oxfam, who is with us tonight to give a brief overview of Oxfam's work historically in Bangladesh up to the present day Rohingya crisis appeal. Before we hear from Tim, we're just going to play you a short video. Thank you. My name is Becky and I'm in Cox's Bazaar in Bangladesh. Over the past week, I've met many Please welcome Tim Hunter. Thank you, Samantha, and um, thank you, Mr. Salek, and all of the organizers of this uh, amazing event. Um, last week, Oxfam marked its 75th um, anniversary. Uh, Oxfam was formed in 1942, uh, the height of the Second World War. Oxfam has become a household name over those 75 years. Sometimes people refer to Oxfam as maybe the kind of the hoover of the kind of charity world. But actually, I think, uh, as of tonight, I think we should be referring to Oxfam as the chicken tikka masala of the kind of charity world, because it's such a British institution uh, and something that kind of people uh, know and love around the organization. And during Oxfam's time, we've worked very closely with the Bangladeshi community. Oxfam was there in Bangladesh as the nation uh, was formed in the early 1970s. And Bangladesh has made huge strides over that period uh, since then. Poverty has been reduced. Many, many people have uh, gained a livelihood, gained freedom from poverty. And Oxfam has sought to play a role as part of that. That role has been driven, obviously, by the government and by communities and businesses, but we've sought to play a role in that as well. And we focus on three areas, what we call water, bringing clean drinking water and sanitation to people, particularly in areas that are um, uh, impacted by flooding and increasingly in kind of urban slums. We talk about work, enabling people to work themselves out of poverty. We support smallholder farmers in a range of different areas. Um, one of the um, projects that we've been supporting over the years is for chili farmers. So what a fantastic and vital part of curry, the chili farmers of Bangladesh, enabling them to engage with global supply chains so that they can earn more and work themselves out of poverty. And the third W to think about is women. Through all of our work, we want to ensure that women's rights and the empowerment of women in um, communities is a central part of what um, we do. So that women can play an active part in their communities, can um, control their lives, and have the same rights as everybody across the community. ARTA is a really exciting new initiative, and we've heard about some of that today. One of the things um, that the speakers talked about was the transparency and the control from uh, people who go to restaurants. I certainly have been thinking about um, uh, one or two in my uh, uh, area of Hackney that I'm going to be kind of nominating, I think. Um, but one of those uh, principles was about transparency. And Oxfam is absolutely committed to the principle of transparency. We make sure that we spend as much as we possibly can on our programs on the ground and our work to change the lives for poor people. But that can't be everything because we need to make sure that we spend money on good management, the kind of things that you all know are really important. 
making sure that we're stamping down on fraud and corruption where it exists. So we're utterly committed to that principle of transparency. You saw in the film the situation uh, as it's developed over the last few years, uh, um, over the last few weeks uh, around the area of Cox's uh, Bazaar. There were already hundreds of thousands of people, uh, Rohingya people who had fled over the years in that area. That has then been um, massively increased since the end of August by something like half a million people fleeing violence, um, uh, desperate situations, many people injured, uh, something like half of the people who fled are women and children. Oxfam is on the ground delivering food, enabling them to get safe um, drinking water, building latrines and emergency toilets. Some of the scenes that we've all seen on TV are incredibly unsanitary uh, and in those situations disease spreads and that first influx wherein people are in desperate need of food is aggravated by the spread of waterborne diseases. One of the amazing things that the curry community has got involved in is fundraising through curry thons over the last few weeks. Two weeks ago in Oxford, 40 restaurants came together on the 4th of October, donating half their profits um, from that night's uh, takings to the Oxfam Rohingya Emergency uh, Appeal. There are other curry thons planned in different parts of the country. It would be fantastic if you could get involved in that as well. We've heard about the challenges that uh, exist in terms of the industry, and I can see that they're very, very pressing. But equally, we've heard about the generosity and the commitment and the social spirit of the British curry um, industry. And I know that you will want to do your bit to help Oxfam and other organizations in responding to the current crisis. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim. I really appreciate your words and informing us more about the crisis that's unfolding there. Um, I'd like to thank a few more people, if I may, who've traveled into London to be here tonight to support this event. Rafiq Haider, director of the Bangladesh Cash and Carry and NRB Bank. Abdul Mukith from Bexhill. Jamil Iqbal, director of the NRB Bank. Ali Ahmed, the AA Express. Tipu Rahman from Northampton. Councillor Mujibir Rahman, also from Northampton. Thank you to you all. Thank you all of you also for your patience, as one of the gentlemen said, and not for, goss for not gossiping and for uh, listening to all of our speakers. I'd now likely like to introduce the rest of the ARTIT team who are all going to come up for a quick photo opportunity. Of course, without these people, tonight wouldn't have been possible and the whole awards wouldn't be possible. So this is the steering committee members for 2018. Mr. Rimon Rahman, Mr. Sufi Mir, if you can all come up to the stage, please. Mr. Khosru Mir, Mr. Aziz Rahman, uh, Monil Islam, Razak Amin Shaheed, Shazid Mir, Kodral Islam, Zakir Khan, and Mohammed of well, Salik. Well, thank you. If you can all come up, we'll have a quick photo. Thank you. Shall I come in? Yeah, yeah, come. Yes. I'll take your place. Okay. Thank you, Samantha. I'll do the honor for you. Uh, just, just like to quickly touch base and just get everyone's attention. Right, these are the people really making this event happen, and I'd like to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart for, for helping me and helping us and, and taking us forward. Thank you to everyone, including Sufi Bai, and he's going, to, he's going to really lead the media side of things, being a media man and we're looking forward to him. Thank you. Um, we are nearly there. Just a couple of more words from a few people who have also been instrumental uh, in this evening. Because for any event to succeed, you need people to work in a team. 
some of them on the front line, others work behind the scenes. We're going to hear now from a couple of people who've really been instrumental in offering their counsel, their guidance, their support to making tonight happen. Uh, first of all, Mitu Chowdhury, who is a successful restaurateur and entrepreneur. If we can just hear from you for a couple of words, please. Good evening, everyone. For the last 25 years, I've worked hard to build my business, the Mughal Dynasty restaurant in Maidstone. My customers have always enjoyed great food along with excellent service. And thankfully, they keep coming back for more. Of course, in business, there are the usual challenges of attracting customers, managing staff, and making money. The world is changing. And the online takeaway market has revolutionized the way people order food. But I felt that I needed to do something different to allow me to compete on my own terms. I passionately believe it's crucial for our long-term success that the Mughal Dynasty brand is clearly recognizable for our customers. And yet, I still needed to find a way to compete with the online takeaway providers. The solution I found is Chef Online, of course, which has made a huge difference to my business. First of all, the new website they built make it easy for our customers to find us, place orders, and make reservations. The restaurant, you know, uh, sorry, that's more amazing is that I can do this without having staff serving the customers to answer the phone. This means the customers in the restaurant get more attention and faster service. Plus, I save 20% of my staffing cost. But the most powerful aspect of the Chef Online solution is that I get the best of the both worlds in terms of marketing. I have the advantage of working with a strong partner who helps promote the restaurants using the latest techniques and strategies. Plus, my customers order through my website. It's our brand the customers deal with, and our brand, they will remember. That means Mughal Dynasty customers today will remain Mughal Dynasty customers tomorrow. The setup, the service, and the support we've had has been excellent. The costs are transparent and manageable. <clears throat> the result is happier clients who spend more and come back more often. This is a great partnership that their excellence in creating and delivering a superb online ordering service allows us at Mughal Dynasty to do what we do best, serving our customers with great food. Thank you, Chef Online, for empowering my business to succeed. Thank you. Okay, now just a few brief words from Shanur Khan, also a successful restaurateur and entrepreneur. Good evening. Assalamu alaikum. I don't have any say anything, but I say one thing. After the speech from British Bangladesh Cattle Association President, I don't have any room to say. I must say thank you to him. Before I go, Artha is a good name. Sound carry not like 40,000, like a 40 million. But my question is, if the winner, will the right winner will have this one or the other way we do this? I must know this one. 
There is just so many awards going on. Welcome to you, board brother. But I read out your leaflet, leaflet mentioned that you're gonna survey through the customers. But Yafur Ali Shah says that you're gonna recognize the chef, but your brochure says you recognize the restaurant. Which area? How is the value you're gonna calculate? My request is do properly. If you do properly, you will be the Oscar. Who will be the winner? He will be the Oscar winner. My request again to you, please, please do properly. I had a long conversation with you the other day, and I told you, British Bangladesh Catering Association always ready for you to expand our hand anytime, anywhere in curry industry. This is our industry. We must point out, we are suffering for the staff. Let's come together, stand together, work together, make we our own. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, everybody. The evening is drawing to a close, not just yet, because I did promise you the opportunity to ask questions. So let me welcome back to the stage Zakir Khan, Razak Armin, Kudral Islam, and Salik, of course. And there are going to be some microphones going around, so please pull your hand up. We've only got 10 minutes or so, so please keep it a brief question if you can. Um, if you'd like to start by putting up your hands as they make their way to the stage, if you have any questions, and we can get the microphones to you. Anybody with a question? I can't believe there aren't any questions. Are you all hungry? <laughs> I think everyone's ready to eat, aren't they? No question, that's great. Uh, let, me, let me address the, the issue that the gentleman raised then, which was about the fact that the, ta the takeaways hadn't really been mentioned, just the, the restaurants, if you'd like to address that. Salih. Thank you, Samantha. Um, I believe Yusufai, where are you? You're hiding there. We were, lo we, we were looking for you and you disappeared. Right. So you came all the way from Liverpool and we like, you know, we appreciate your comments and we need feedback and that's what we want to hear from everyone. Yes, it's Asian Restaurant oh, okay. and Takeaway Awards. We will be honoring everyone across the board, whoever deserved it, whether they're restaurant or takeaway, everyone's on board. Thank you. Okay, any media questions? <laughs> media questions? I'm lots of journalists here tonight, so if you'd like any questions, now is the opportunity to ask them. We have covered, hopefully, most of them in the beginning of the evening, explaining what's so special about these awards. Is a request based on British curry, not Indian curry. Okay. Indian curry. Not anymore. We've been struggling for the last four years to give it new names. Okay. It is the British curry Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it for just, your just feedback. Just before I come to you, sir, just are there any journalist questions? It is only journalists because we are out of time. But we're going to be going to eat now, so I'm sure that you can um, accost anybody you like <laughs> and ask them a question. But unless there are questions from journalists, then I think we will. Oh, there's, there's, there, there's one question here. As do you have any special uh, judges panel? Thank you, Tamir Bhai. Yes, we do. We are hopeful that we'll get the council involved, the local um, food editors involved. We'll also get um, the head of academy from the colleges and university involved, and hopefully they will make a transparent team. Thank you. Okay, Hello. is that it? Any more from the journalists? Uh, do you have any apps that people can go through it quickly? It's, it's under development, so hopefully we will have that soon. Thank you. Well, I cannot actually believe it, but we are finishing okay. on time. Great. I think that deserves a round of applause. No, we're, we're finishing. Yes. No, no, we are, we are finishing now. Sure. You need to get people voting so they yeah. get you win an award. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Okay, hecklers now, hecklers. 
I studied at Liverpool. You've got a vote from me. Um, I'd like to thank all of you, Salik, for organising this evening, for all of you for being here, for all of our guest speakers, Devon, Tim, and of course, Howard, and everybody else who's spoken passionately about what they believe in. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It's been a real honour to be here tonight. I wish you all the best of luck with the awards. Uh, please go and eat some delicious curry. That's what it's all about. Thank you. <laughs>